Good morning from Americade, everyone. We are over at Honda today, and we are going to be test riding this beautiful new 2022 Honda Goldwing. Welcome back to Americade. So today we're on the Honda Goldwing DCT. We are currently in sport mode on a guided group ride around Lake George. Go ahead and get this windshield up, make it even quieter in the video for you guys. And just like that, all the wind just gets cut away. This is an impressive bike. No belt drive, no chain, using Honda's drive shaft, one of the few companies that uses drive shaft technology and dual clutch transmission so fully automatic it does have an electric manual mode so if we click into manual over here on the left hand side then we have to shift using a finger driven paddle shifter over here on the left handlebar control so you can see on the dash there we're in fourth we click over here it drops to third back up to fourth and i'm going to put it back into automatic so we're in sport mode on the highway. If I give it a little juice here, uh, I can't quite get it up there yet. But the bike does have a seventh gear. So not a traditional one down five up, but apparently one down six up. Not that you're shifting down anyway. That DCT, it does feel pretty weird not to have a clutch over here and not to have a shifter by your left foot. Of course, Honda's been making these gold wings for a long time. The engines are absolutely solid and bulletproof. It's one of the longest lasting, most reliable, best all around motorcycles you could ever, ever buy. If you wanna buy one bike and be done forever and never have to worry about really servicing and maintenance, the maintenance on these is pretty low. I mean, it's just oil changes and air filter changes. Easy enough. So if you want yourself a long lasting, low maintenance bike, this is it. If we hit home on our info screen, you see we've got a couple of options. We've got audio sources, so you can choose between things like radio. Let's see, do we have volume over here on the left? I think we do. We got Sirius XM built in. We have auxiliary port. There's seven. If you look down there, we've got a gear indicator for gear seven. Back to radio, let's see what else is there. Auxiliary, there's Bluetooth and iPod connection as well. So if I had my phone paired up via Bluetooth, you would see that here on the screen. We click it back into home again. We can go to settings, we can go back to navigation, we can go to our phone. So if you had your phone connected, you would have stuff like, uh, oh, you would have stuff like text messages, phone calls you can make through your headset and you would see that sort of info pop up on the screen. So looking at our navigation screen there, pretty standard. I don't know if it has weather and traffic built into it like uh, on the Indian. Because this has Sirius XM, I have an idea or a feeling that it may have traffic and weather built in, but I will check that out and put that information up on the screen for you guys if that's an available option. So we've talked about the power of the bike. We've talked about the electronics on the screen. Really, it's just navigation and audio. There are some other settings you can adjust on this bike. This is just the flat, like basic Goldwing model. You can get the more uh, upgraded touring version, which has a tour pack on the back, driving lights on the front, and an electronically adjusted suspension with traction control. This model does not have that. This is just your bare bones basic if you can call a Goldwing basic. Uh, just kind of the basic version. You also have some other features like cruise control. Of course, we've got the powered windshield up and down. So we get a lot more wind and wind noise there with it down, put it back up. Makes for a much more comfortable ride. We do have cruise control on the right handlebar over here. 
On the left handlebar control, we do have the controls for like volume and adjusting things left and right, up and down in the menus. We also have a button on the left that allows us to do voice commands. So if you have your headset and your phone and everything paired up perfectly, you can do voice commands through your headset by tapping that button and activating voice command system. So we've talked a bit about the engine with it being electronic manual, it's automatic, plenty of power. I will put the torque and horsepower specs up on the screen for you guys. We've also discussed the electronics, some of the features it has there. Now let's talk about comfort. Comfort is in two parts, the seat and the riding position. Out of the gate, I am not a fan of stock seats. I just, I never am. However, the Goldwing has a really good stock seat. I feel very comfortable on this. I could ride on this for hours. I don't feel any pressure points. The seat is wide. And that's really where your comfort comes from. You want a wide, very supportive seat. If it's too soft, your butt will sag into it after a while, the foam will compress, and it will be uncomfortable. If it's wide and has a bit of stiffness to it, that will provide you with more support through the day. You won't get lower back issues, and your butt will thank you in the long run. This seat kind of meets all that criteria. It feels very nice, and I would be very comfortable riding on this all day, I believe. As far as the riding position is concerned, I'm usually not a fan of having my legs directly underneath of me, which is kind of where they are on the gold wing. My legs are slightly bent down from my thighs, and then my knees are bent pretty much 90 degrees straight down to the pegs. So coming from a cruiser where I have forward controls and my legs recline a little bit out in front of me, here it's more of an upright seating position, which again, lends itself to some better posture, better for long all day riding. You could always get an accessory, I guess, to uh, put some pegs out there to rest your legs further out if you want to, but it's not an uncomfortable position. I just prefer to have my legs a bit further out in front of me. Just my personal preference there. As far as the handlebar controls, handlebars are at a nice low angle here. We're not dealing with ape hangers on a gold wing. In fact, I've never seen that. If you guys have, let me know because that would be hilarious to see. But my arms are dropped down and have about a 45 degree bend in the elbows, coming down and resting comfortably out like I'm sitting almost at a desk. Kind of the same level my arms would be in if I had them out in front and resting on a keyboard or something. Overall, for riding comfort, I'll give it about a 9 out of 10. The seat is great, the riding position is good. I would just prefer my legs to be a little bit more in front rather than tucked underneath at a 90 degree bend. For me, I'm five foot eight, I've got a 30, no, 29 inch inseam. So maybe that'll give you guys some reference there. If you have a taller inseam, you might wanna have some extra pegs installed so when you're cruising highway, you could stick your legs out in front of you just to stretch out a little bit during your ride. So we've talked about power, we've talked about the electronic display, some of the features it has, like the powered windscreen, voice command, we've talked about comfort. So really the last two things that I judge bikes on in my five categorical criteria is styling and handling. Now we haven't really hit the twisties here, we've been on the highway. Anything kind of handles decent on the highway, usually. But when we come to the twisties up here, I will be able to give you a much better idea of what the handling characteristics are of this bike. Again, you're sitting more upright. It's not as reclined as a cruiser. So I feel like it'll handle a little bit better than a large Harley or Indian, but it's definitely not gonna be like a Honda CBR. As far as style, I hope you guys enjoyed those videos and pics at the beginning of this video. It's a little bit difficult to get some really, you know, scenic shots here at Americade. We're just in the demo lot. It's a good looking bike. It's definitely a nicer design, I think, than the original Goldwings. I might be still a little bit partial to the late 2000s Goldwings. Uh, they looked pretty nice as well. But the new futuristic style of the Goldwing, it's kind of like riding a spaceship. It's very angular in its design, blacked out colors, matte finishes. They do make this in a manual, like a straight manual with a clutch and a shifter as well. And that is a gloss color. So that's how you can really differentiate the new Gold Wings apart. It'll be more of a gloss and chrome look versus the DCT models have more of a blacked out and flat finished look. Don't remember the price off the top of my head, but I will put that up on the screen for you guys. 
One of the biggest differences between this and the Touring model is going to be storage capabilities. On here you've got saddlebags, and on the quote-unquote the bigger Touring model, you'll also have the trunk and tour pack, which you can get to put on here. So you, if you had this model or you just got the base model and want to add the tour pack later, you can do that as well. But that's one of the biggest differences, that and the electronic expansion. But that is like the biggest difference, that and the electronic suspension between this and the super duper touring DCT model. I'll tell you what, the shifting on here is very smooth. You can hear it make a tiny little click when it shifts up and shifts down, but you don't feel it. It's incredibly smooth, kind of like a car in a way. Of course, if you do it electronically with the manual mode, that's also nice because you have full control. But shifting on its own is really, really well done. Now, Honda DCT technology has been around for a while. They've perfected it in the Goldwing. It's a wonderful, wonderful system. However, I did ride the Honda Rebel 1100 DCT the other day. And I will tell you guys, it was not good. The shifting was just terrible. Now, you can click that one into manual mode as well and do electronic shifting. But it wasn't fine-tuned in that motorcycle. In this Goldwing, it is most definitely fine-tuned. The shifting is just fantastic in here. Really, really nice. Got a little bit of lean in the curve there. Pretty good. It's definitely a, an acquired feel sitting more upright and diving into those turns. I'm used to being more reclined. You feel from this upright position, you feel like when you dive into the turn, you're diving over further because you're sitting higher up. So your whole body feels like it's going over at a steeper angle. You're not, but it just feels that way because you're sitting so high on the bike. The sport mode on this really is different from all the other modes. Rain mode, the throttle is just anemic. It just is so low on power, which is great in wet conditions. In tour mode, throttle response is super smooth. It's nicer when you're cruising with two people. Gotta give the ladies a nice smooth ride. Economy mode, I haven't tried because I'm not paying for the gas on the demo, so who cares? But sport mode, it'll give you a good jolt. You get in that throttle, it'll take off on you. And having seven gears, I would love to have opened this thing up on the highway and see how fast it really could go. That's the problem with group rides, you gotta keep it legal, be the speed limit and all that crap. Anyway, from what I can experience here, I'm just telling you guys, sport mode gives you a good jolt and it feels pretty good. It handles very nicely. As far as the, uh, they told us we can't like wiggle back and forth in our lane. We're supposed to maintain stagger formation. But I did try it a little bit back there. As far as, you know, push to lean, feels very lightweight in the controls. Just the slightest push and you dip right into the turn. So very easy to control. I understand why they're marketed towards a slightly older audience. They feel very smooth in their response when you're in tour mode. The handling is very gentle, but very precise and easy, and the controls feel lightweight with everything. Of course, they're also partly aimed at the older generation because my generation is broke as balls. So. So what are my overall thoughts on the Honda Goldwing? Well, lots of storage options, all day comfort for touring, tons of power, more gadgets and screen information than you need on a bike, but you have it all. You got outdoor air temperature, you have engine temperature, you got miles, miles to empty, average miles per gallon, four different riding modes, standard, tour, sport, and rain, or no, rain, standard, sport, and economy, cruise control, powered windshield, Reverse. I mean, what bike out there has reverse? As far as I know, Goldwings are the only one with reverse. If I'm wrong on that, somebody correct me down below, but I'm pretty sure Honda's the only one that's got reverse on it. Comfortable and handles like a dream. I don't know what more you could want on a bike. It's an amazing, amazing ride. And that windshield is very, very good. It sits far enough away from you and gets up tall enough that it gets most of the air over top. Now, on the Touring model, like the, the bigger Touring model, 
they do have a slightly taller windshield and I feel like when you're at highway speed that would be helpful around 60 this thing blocks all the wind however over 60 back there on the highway we were doing about 70 and I was getting a little bit of buffeting so I'd say the standard windshield on the standard Goldwing is fine up to about 60 but if you're gonna ride a lot of highway I would at least get the taller windshield as an option if you're just getting the base model so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you like this bike? What do you like about it or don't like about it? I'd love to hear from you guys. I like talking motorcycles and finding out what you guys like. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. That helps us crack the YouTube algorithm and get this video out to more people. If you're new here and you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. It's the big red button. Click the bell icon next to it. And that'll give you guys notifications when there are new videos to watch here on Motoblade. I have been doing tons of test ride videos for you guys. Sorry if you're getting tired of the test ride content. But I have been filming a lot here at the Americade Bike Rally in Lake George this week. So be sure to check out all those other test ride videos for some awesome content. So thank you guys so much for watching. You all know what to do. Be careful out there on the road. Ride safe. Ride on. I'll catch you all in the next video. Deuces.